Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another episode of the PLC Programming Cookbook. I'm your host, John Breen, and today we're going to be talking about something very foundational to any programming, not even just PLC programming, but we'll be doing it in a PLC specific way. In, in many cases, we call this pseudocode. It's like fake code. It's pre-code. It's the thing that we do to organize what we're going to program before we program it. And that is so essential when you're trying to make a program that's that, that makes sense at the end. If you start and just kind of hack your way through a program, you're going to end up with a mess. And it might work, but it's going to be hard to maintain, hard for the next guy to read, and it's probably going to take you a lot longer. So let's talk about what we're trying to achieve here. I've got a simple machine up in front of us here. This is something that we've talked about in another video already. It's a conveyor belt. It's moving in this direction. When the box gets here, we just want this pusher to push the box onto the next step of the process. Maybe that's another conveyor. Maybe this is a reject, whatever it may be. Now, we don't want this system to do anything until we push this start button. So I'll give you an example. I can click on this to tell it there's a box there and nothing's happening, right? Box, box, no box, whatever, nothing happens. After I click the start button, and you know, in a real system, we'd probably have a stop button and some other things, but this is just an example. Now, if I give it a box here, and we'll present, we'll pretend a box came down the line, it's gonna push that box off, and then it's going to retract the cylinder again and wait for another box. So, don't pay any attention to this code here. This is from a different example, but I wanted to have a visual for what I'm talking about here. The first step in virtually any PLC program is inputs and outputs. We're always asking ourselves this question. What are we getting in? What do we have to send out? So in this case, I'm going to say, look, I've got a start push button. That's an input. I've got a cylinder switch here and here. So that's two inputs and that looks like about it for this system. Again, if we have a stop push button, maybe we have uh, safety circuits or, uh, or whatever else, those would all be inputs as well. But in this case, we've got three. Then outputs, we've got two for the cylinder, right? Extend and retract. We're gonna pretend that it is a double acting solenoid valve. And that looks like about it as well. Again, in reality, perhaps we would have something that runs this conveyor, um, but we're not simulating that in this case. So let's jump over to the whiteboard now and sketch this out. Okay, so I've already written down our inputs and outputs, as we talked about, and I wrote down something else as well. This is the next step that I want to talk about. And this is going to feed right into our next video where we're going to turn this into real code. So this is a real process for making a real program. I know this might seem like boring theory, but stick with me for just a few minutes here and the next video is going to make a ton of sense and you'll be able to actually start writing code. So we want to think about what this system is doing in terms of states. It's going to do this until something happens and then it's going to do something else until something happens, et cetera, et cetera. And I've already outlined these states in this case. The first thing it's waiting for is the start button. Until we push that start button, nothing is going to happen. So we're waiting for start button. That's state number one. State number two, now we're waiting for a box before anything happens. After a box is there, we're going to push the box. And after we're done pushing, we're going to retract again to get ready for the next box. So very simple. Now, how do we go from, you know, this listing of things into a state flow? That's what I'm going to do next is draw out how the system moves from one state to another. And we, we have this in our brain. I'll draw it out. And then, like I say, it will convert very cleanly into a structured program. So first, state one, we're waiting for the start button. We're going to go to state two after the start push button is pressed. Okay, excuse my messy handwriting. That probably is not very surprising, right? That's what we called the state. It's waiting for start. Okay, cool. We know we have two other states and I'll just go ahead and draw them in three and four. 
Okay, well, state two, again, we named it something that makes a lot of sense. We're waiting for a box to be present. Okay, so the thing that brings us from state two to state three is box present. After a box is present, we're in state three. Well, now we're pushing the box and we're gonna stay in that state until, in this case, our program hasn't been written to push until the box is gone. And we probably wouldn't wanna write a program that way. We typically write a program until we see that the cylinder switch has been made. So in this case, we say the cylinder is extended. And after that cylinder is extended, we come back to state four and we're retracting. So we turn off that cylinder extend output and we turn on the cylinder retract output until the cylinder is retracted. So this is 100% based on the states that we've outlined, these states right here, and the inputs that we've identified. The outputs now come in when we say, what states turn on these outputs? So I'm just gonna add that in text here because I don't think it really needs to be graphical. Extend cylinder is going to be on in state three. Will it be on in any other state? Nope, it's not. It's not gonna be on when we're waiting for the start button. It's not gonna be on when we're waiting for the box. It's only gonna be on after the start push button is pressed and we've determined there's a box present. So state three is it. And then retract cylinder. Again, is only gonna be on in one state. You can guess we're waiting for the cylinder to be retracted here. So this is the state where we care about that. Okay, so this is all of the pseudocode for this program. Very simple and, and very methodical. This is a process that you can repeat for much, much larger machines. And I'll be honest, I don't generally use this system anymore. I will always list inputs and outputs somewhere that's very, very important. The rest of this I tend to do in my head now, but I am doing this in my head. I'm just not doing it on paper anymore. This is how many programmers think. And if you can do it on paper, that really helps train your brain to think about these things because they have to be thought about. This is a concept now that we can represent in code in a way that other people can understand. So I hope that helps get the gears turning gets you thinking about programming like a programmer and helps you make your programs more organized and intentional. Join us next time and we will take this to the next level and turn it into a real program. And then you'll know from start to finish how to think about it and how to make it. All right, see you there. Thanks, John. The weather is beautiful here at Brain Machine. Looking at the map, we can see a massive subscriber front coming right through here with a high chance of likes and shares. And I would bet you we'll see some comments in the near future as well. Don't miss the great weather. Click here to keep it coming. Back to you, John.